Hey, welcome to Fiddlehead Fiddle Lessons. I want to help you to learn note reading so that you can more easily learn tunes that you love. So a lot of sheet music is very complex. What I'm going to teach you today is how to, to remove the complexity and make it more simple. So the first thing you can do is to remove as much embellishment and expression markings as possible. So this means removing any slurs, any double stops, any rolls like those Irish squiggles, any slides, any volume markings like piano or forte or crescendo. I want you to kind of pencil cross that out and focus on just the core melody at first. You learn that melody really well and then later we can go and add all this fun stuff back. But if you get bogged down in that too soon, you may just be like, oh, I don't like this tune. And I don't want that to happen. I want you to succeed with just learning a basic melody. And, and then, so let's actually do it. But I want to say one more thing, which is that if you learn to take stuff away, you'll see that you, it'll, you learn the creative power of fiddle tunes because then you'll see how you can put it back instead of just starting with the final version which is a variation. So let's take a look at Swallowtail Jig. We're going to look at a version that has variation. That's a tune we'll get to later. So here's a ver version with variation built in. I'm just going to go ahead and play the A part as written. Alright, so there's a lot going on, and this is my variation from my uh, Irish Fiddle Journeys course. But it, you know, th this is typical of a lot, of, a lot of sheet music. You'll see some sheet music is just super simple, but a lot of it will be more complex. And so, a lot of beginners are kind of like, well, what do I do with this? So, what you can basically do, I'm going to first kind of with the mouse show you what I'm going to remove. I'm going to remove these 16th note duplets. Same thing here and here and here. I'm going to remove this roll. I'm going to remove this slur. Remove these du duplets, these. Remove this slur, this roll, this slur, this slur, and this. This is basically a slide here. It's, it's just written as a different note, but we're sliding. Okay, so now let's look at a version with, with some of that stuff is crossed out. So basically, I worked through it and I kind of just X'd out. And you could do this with a pencil, or if you um, like, you can print sheet music and use a pencil to do it. Or you, if you know how to use some kind of music notation software like Muse, you can actually edit it yourself. So anyway, so here's kind of a messy version that I use pencil things out and then here's what that same thing looks like very simplified this is just kind of the core essential melody and so what you then do is now that you've got that essential melody you learn it really well learn it from memory be able to hear it in your head which is audiation and once you have a kind of a deep feeling for it then you can go back and look at that very those weird variation ideas and maybe add one at a time maybe you add that 16th note duplet but nothing else so again being able to take stuff away will help you better understand how to add it does that make sense okay so that's a that's probably the, the biggest lesson that you'll get in this lesson, but the next, we'll move on now. So the next thing you can do to simplify reading music doesn't really involve altering it. It means looking for things that repeat. I've talked about this a bunch in other lessons. I'll just briefly go over it. I'm going to add one new idea. So in case you've heard me talk about it before, hang in there. So when looking at, at fiddle tunes, there's very common things that are repeated. Let's go through them. Often, the first quarter of a tune is the same as the third quarter. Often, the fourth quarter of an A part is the same as the fourth quarter of a B part. 
and often the second half of an A part is the second half of a B part. So if you are reading music and you know those three things, you can easily start to pick things out. Is this, you can immediately, like so let's say you learn the first quarter of something, you can immediately ask yourself, is it the same as the third quarter? Go look, and if it is, it's like, yes, my job is easier. You start to feel confident, you can, you're gonna get this tune. So let's look at a couple examples. So let's look at Kerry Polka, an example I've used a ton, but anyhow, so the first quarter, the first two bars is also the third quarter. So I'll just play it to make it clear, but first quarter, and we have the second quarter. Third quarter is the same as the first. So that's an example there. And then often the, the other big pattern, so sheet music, reading sheet music is a lot about noticing patterns. Your brain does it automatically if you let it. All right, so my big message is to allow your brain to just pick up on the patterns and, and don't focus so much on the rules. All right, so the uh, fourth quarter of the A part is and then if you look at the sheet music, it's also the fourth quarter of the B part. All right. The third big pattern that you'll notice is that sometimes the entire second half of the A part is the same as the second half of the B part. So let's go look at that. And here we have Tobin's jig. And the second half of the A part is... so joyous I like when I get up and like flap my wings even though I don't have wings um, so yeah so that that's another example of the pattern of that that little part is the second half of the a part and the B part so and you may not always see this but anyhow that and in my course the fiddlehead course I've designed a lot of these tunes the, my arrangements ha take this into consideration. If I notice the third quarter is just a little bit different, I'll make it similar to the first. All right, so before I go on with the lesson, I want to say that if you've gotten anything out of this so far, please hit that like button, please subscribe, and thank you for watching. Okay, let's get back to it. Okay, so the last thing that I'll teach you in for learning to simplify tunes is looking for what I call hidden repetition. So oftentimes, especially in fiddle tunes, the first, like going back to the previous idea of like looking for very blatant repetition, like the first quarter is the same as the third. Oftentimes, that third quarter will be just a little bit different, maybe one or two notes. And so my, my advice to you, my big suggestion is to simply substitute that similar first quarter for the third quarter, make them the same while you're learning it, just for now, just until you learn it, till you get that tune in your bones, and then you can go back and kind of change it up again and learn, learn it different ways. Once you're a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more advanced. Does that make sense? We're gonna, we're gonna talk it through, but basically the same patterns you'll look for is the third, but but instead of equal to, you'll want you'll be looking for is the first quarter similar to the third. If it's very similar, they might be able to substitute. It might not work, but it might. All right. Same thing with the fourth quarter of the A part. Is it similar enough to the fourth quarter of the B part that you could just kind of make them the same? And it might involve, you know, grabbing the fourth quarter of the B part and making it the fourth quarter of the A part, or vice versa. All right, so let's look at a tune, a, let's see, let's look at Chilly Winds. So it's a little bit messy because I've marked up the sheet music. That's a, a side lesson that you can use a pencil when you're learning. I think I used a pen a little bit, which means that I'm stuck with it. But if you use a pencil, you can create notes for yourself to make it easier for your future self to figure out what to learn and what you need to practice. So. Anyway, we'll, I'll get, talk more about using a pencil in an, another lesson on note reading tips. So here's a, here's a tune called Chilly Winds, and the first quarter is... All right, and then 
if we scroll down to bars nine, ten, we know you 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 can notice that it's very similar, and that there's in fact one note difference. So instead of if we go back to the first quarter, and it does this, it goes down to an A. The third quarter does this. It does a, a, a G low two. And so when I was learning this tune, I just said, okay, I'm gonna simplify it. I'm gonna make the first quarter, I'm gonna substitute that in for the plug it into the third quarter. And so it completely works. It there's no sometimes it'll sound weird and you may not want to do it, but in this particular case it works. I'm just gonna play through that to that point. totally works. So that's just an example of finding hidden repetition. I probably could have picked an easier example, but I was feeling lazy today and that just was one I was playing recently. So I want to close out the lesson by just saying that this simplification process actually leads to creativity. Some people may listen to what I'm saying and say, oh, you're just making the tune more boring. It used to be so interesting and you're just flattening it and making it this boring thing. And I hope that you understand that the idea is you're, we're simplifying it in this early learning phase so that you can really get the tune. You're not dependent on sheet music, you can hear it in your head, it's in your soul. And then you can go back and look at sheet music or even different versions of the sheet music and start to craft your own version. And by Doing the subtraction process, you'll understand how variation works better. So ultimately, it will make you a more creative player. And one other idea that I think it'll help you with is playing with other people. Because as you know, there's lots of versions of fiddle tunes. So if you go to play with somebody else and they're playing it different, and it's not what you're, you might freak out if you've never played it differently. And so being able to do this process of paring down a tune to its like core essence will help you to play with other people, adapt, maybe pick up what they're doing. Anyway, I hope that this was helpful. It was fun for me to teach it to you because I love this kind of stuff. This is what I live for. It's just like the playing with music and playing with creativity, being creative within certain bounds. You, know, you have this tune, there's a lot of boundaries, but you can do all this cool stuff within it. So if it was useful to you, please send a message, leave a comment, whatever, let me know. And thanks for watching. Fiddlehead. See you soon. Go to fiddlehead.com for a progressive step-by-step -step course outline, color-coded tabs, play-along tracks, sheet music, and much more. Thanks for watching the video club. Excellent. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.